Hi everyone and welcome to our ECG course from zero to hero in acute coronary syndrome. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the emergency medicine consultants in United Kingdom. And in this talk, we're going to be talking about some indications to activate the cath lab and when to do it appropriately and when it's going to be considered a little bit of an inappropriate indication to do that. So let's move on and see uh, what we can come up with in this talk. So that's the next one. And let's see what the clinical presentation is going to be. So this time we've got a 64 year old male patient presented to ED following a VF cardiac arrest. Now we've got ROSC. Now patient is hemodynamically stable with normal blood pressure unsupported. And a 12 lead ECG was done and there is no signs of STEMI. Question again is, do you think that this patient would qualify for immediate PCI in your local hospital? Think about it. Try to put yourself in this situation and, and imagine what's going to happen if you discuss this case with your PCI team. OK, let's move on and see what's going to happen here. This time we're going to be talking about PCI for post cardiac arrest patients. So. Let's start from where do we stand at the moment uh, with this issue? So post cardiac arrest plus STEMI in the ECG, there is no doubt about this. All the evidence supports immediate cath lab activation. So no one is going to argue with this. So if you see a STEMI post cardiac arrest straight to the cath lab, easy peasy. But post cardiac arrest without a STEMI, this is the point of debate. So in 2014, there were recommendations from the American Heart Association that post VF cardiac arrest should go immediately to the cat lab. The post assistly should be treated differently, but the post VF cardiac arrest, it is an immediate cat lab activation. So this is coming from the 2014 American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology guidelines uh, for management of patients with non ST elevation ACS. And they said in these guidelines that immediate catheterization is now indicated for patients who are post-ventricular fibrillation cardiac arrest, even in absence of ST elevation in their ECGs. But over the next few years, we started getting more evidence and the evidence started to grow. And in 2019, the COAG trial results came out with a bit of a surprise. So this was the COAG trial. So coronary angiography after cardiac arrest without ST segment elevation. This is a multi-center uh, randomized controlled trial that studied actually cardiac arrest without signs of STEMI uh, to undergo immediate coronary angio uh, or coronary angio that was delayed until after neurological recovery. And all patients in this trial uh, underwent PCI if indicated. And the primary end point of this study was the survival at 90 days. They've had so many secondary outcomes, all important, but the primary outcome was the survival at 90 days, comparing immediate PCI versus delayed PCI. And interestingly, the conclusion of the study was uh, that among patients who had been successfully resuscitated after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and had no signs of STEMI, the strategy of immediate angio was not found to be better than the strategy of delayed angio. So no difference in survival between uh, those patients who's ha who've had a immediate angiography versus uh, delayed angiography. And that is regarding the overall survival at 90 days. So, any support from the guidelines at the moment? Yes. So the, again, uh, again, we're going to go back to the 2020 ESC guidance uh, for ACS without ST elevation. So, uh, and again, we're going to go back to the same table that we've seen before, the same um, flow chart that tells us which way to go depending upon the risk stratification of the patients. So we said before, According to the risk stratification, if you've got a very high risk, then you get an immediate PCI within the last two hours. And we've already covered the high risk features 
uh, here. Uh, what we didn't talk about is actually the high risk, not the very high risk, but the high risk features. Uh, those are the ones that they get early invasive therapy within less than, uh, less than 24 hours. So these are the high risk features. So if we make them bigger, we will notice that they include the resuscitated cardiac arrest without ST elevation or cardiogenic shock. So resuscitated cardiac arrest with hemodynamic stability, without cardiogenic shock, without ST elevation, there is no um, improvement in survival if you immediately uh, take them to the cath lab. The outcome is the same if you take them within 24 hours compared to within less than two hours. So that is the outcome of, um, of the COACT trial and that is the outcome uh, from, uh, and th this is what's recommended from the um, European Society of Cardiology guidance. So uh, again, that is from the um, ESC guidelines and they said there that the delayed uh, as opposed to immediate angiography uh, should be considered in hemodynamically stable patients without ST elevation uh, successfully resuscitated after out of hospital cardiac arrest. And the evidence regarding this is coming in yellow. So uh, we are here, which is a class two way evidence. So fairly uh, reasonable uh, level of evidence to support uh, this practice. So let's go back to our case and revisit it and see um, whether this patient should go to the cath lab immediately or not. This was a 64 year old male patient presented to ED following a VF cardiac arrest. Patient is now has got ROSC. The patient is hemodynamically stable, normal blood pressure, 12 lead ECG is not showing any signs of STEMI. And the question is, would this patient, you think, qualify for immediate PCR in your local hospital? Well, going through the guidelines now and knowing what we know now, I guess the answer is no. Don't be surprised if you get a no from the cardiology team if you try to refer this patient to them, simply because these are the recommendations from the uh, European Society of Cardiology at the moment, and all the evidence showed no difference uh, in mortality uh, for Im comparing immediate uh, revascularization versus delayed PCI. This patient will go to the cath lab, but within 24 hours rather than within two hours of arrival.